Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is the first Tuesday in July. Can we believe July is here already? Life, you know, like life keeps us on our toes. You know, the seasons change. We're officially in the summer season. So I hope wherever you are, that you are doing well. And I hope that you know that Creator is walking with you. Um, you know, our ancestors are cheering us on. Uh, we have good stories, good medicine as an indigenous people. And I hope that this is the season that you're making those good connections. Um, tap into our ceremonies, listen to the stories, sit on the land. You know, you're surrounded by medicine wherever you go. So welcome to Links to Learning. We're delighted that you're here and we're delighted for our guest speaker. But first and foremost, I always like to take a moment and just give a shout out to Crater and give thanks for the gift of this day, this moment that we're, we're able, I'm still always in awe that we're able to connect even on this virtual platform. And we are able to be inspired and taking all of the good knowledge that's passed on to us today. So creator, we give you thanks for this moment, this day. And um, we acknowledge all of the goodness that you've brought into our lives. Hi, hi. All right, so I'm joining today. My name is Michelle. I'm joining from, normally I'm in Amiskwichi, Waskaga in Treaty 6 territory where the Wi-Fi is all around me, but I'm out on the land here in Treaty 4 territory. So I feel really blessed and honored to still be able to connect with you all. So you've joined Links to Learning and we are in for a treat today. So we have our guest speaker, um, Gina is joining us. Um, so the topic today is the making of a Bears Lair TV show, the conception, sponsor, attraction, and the most important part, reconciliation. So we're going to be able to listen to our guest speaker, an entrepreneur, Gina Jackson, as she worked to turn a long-held dream into reality by creating Bears Lair TV, a new nine-episode reality TV series that will be featured on prime time this September. I believe she said a Sunday evening, so get ready, put in your calendars. Um, on APTN. So we're looking forward to that. So we're going to learn how Gina combined 20 years of experience in empowering Indigenous entrepreneurs, leading procurement and economic development initiatives in various First Nations, and a degree in broadcast journalism to start her own media empowerment company. Shout out to you, which is Sparkling Frog Clown Productions Incorporated. So follow her journey to align people and resources to shape the bear layer brand and create a culturally rich stage that will showcase the stories, the diversity and resilience of 18 diverse emerging and established Indigenous entrepreneurs from across the nation who were selected to compete on season one of the Bears Lair TV. She will share highlights and lessons learned. I'm going to be taking <laughs> notes as her team worked to produce this new reality TV series with real impact that challenges mainstream capitalist focused business reality TV shows. So she's just going to bring all of her knowledge uh, for the next 45 minutes. We're so honored that you've decided to share with us today here at Can Do. I'm just going to you know, pass the, the virtual mic over to you. Um, if there are any questions along the way, comments, feel free to put in the chat box. I will make notes. We do have space at the end for any questions that you might have to bring. So we're looking forward to being inspired this afternoon. So Gina, the show is yours. Welcome. Great, great. Thank you, everybody, um, for tuning in. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional unceded territory that, that I live, breathe, eat, play, work um, of the Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam Nations, and as closest to me right now, I live in Coquitlam, so the Coquitlam First Nation, so honored to be on the territory of, of my cousins and people out here on the West Coast. So thank you so much. I would, I, uh, I want to um, acknowledge, I think I saw Aureen on here as well, but my partner in crime, Kristen Kozabek, who, uh, Spirit Link, who's, everybody knows uh, Kristen in the industry of, of teaching entrepreneurs and really advancing lives of entrepreneurs all over Canada. So I want to acknowledge her as a guest as well. And then Aureen, one of my, uh, one of the coaches and 
Um, just love her death or Rina Oscar DJ Osho. So I've asked Elizabeth um, to share a screen uh, because um, as Kristen knows, technology is not my friend and uh, wanted to share a PowerPoint with you on how the Bears Lair was, um, was brought up, um, the, the struggles that, you know, and uh, challenges that we had with starting a show out of scratch, just out of an idea and acknowledging all of the people that invested their time, efforts, belief, and um, just love to advance indigenous lives. So, Want really, really excited to share the journey with you. So I think you can click, 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 um, what we're gonna talk about today. Um, what we're gonna talk about is the leadership team. Who is, who was part of this from the very beginning? Who really paved the way? The timeline of, of how this got started because it was in a very short, uh, timeline and execution is everything. And, uh, and we really, you know, if we've got a challenge as Indigenous people, we're very resilient and, and we make, if we're going to do something, we're going to do something and, and we go all in. So about how that was challenges that we face and not in a negative challenge, but boy, you know, just learning something that's out of our world and, and really working with experts and people that we could lean on for advice. And most importantly, and this is Kristen's, you know, make not SHIT happen, but make shift happen for economic reconciliation. And, uh, and I love how she uses reconciliation because we can talk about reconciliation and you know, I've, my whole life has been working in procurement and uh, I, we hear talks about it, but really making a difference and reconciliation action and seeing it happen. So next slide, please. Here I am. I hate pictures of myself. So this is lovely, like me on camera with a picture of myself. But here I am. My name is Gina Jackson. I'm a proud member of the Seashelt Nation on the Sunshine Coast. My traditional name is Cetacea. Uh, originally, I thought it meant uh, matriarch and bringer, you know, of food for the community and provider. It actually just means bossy. Um, but, you know, I execute. Uh, I'm the CEO um, and creator, uh, executive producer of, of the Bears Lair. I, um, I have 13 years in my repertoire working with the Indigenous community, the Squamish Nation, which is the second largest community in British Columbia. I, in my journey, helped over 500 entrepreneurs from the idea of their business to the pursuant of their dream and fruition of starting a business. Um, I've nominated seven people for BC Achievement Awards and all of them have won. So um, still keeping the I've nominated a few this year as well. So just keeping it moving. I've got my broadcast journalism degree. Oh God, almost 25 years ago. And uh, in hopes that I would become a TV journalist and then ended up on a different way altogether, uh, representing uh, indigenous communities and entrepreneurs and procurement and capacity building and right back, you know, round circle. Um, honored uh, and blessed to have uh, Kristen Kozovac in my life. She is, uh, she, I met her with a Squamish Nation. There's, I facilitated a grant program for, um, for seed funding for Indigenous entrepreneurs. And there's no use in giving up money if we don't have the education on how to use it and identify our target markets and really have a friendly, safe space, space to learn. Um, and she was just, amazing with that and really the nucleus of all of the success we had with entrepreneurs. So I would like to thank her so much in her journey. She's, uh, she's helped over 1400 entrepreneurs, uh, won women of reconciliation, reconciliation action award and master of indigenous, uh, education degree from SFU. So great to have Kristen on next slide, please. Before we start this, I have to say that I asked Kristen if she could help me for four hours with setting up sponsors for this great idea of a TV show that I had, and now it's been almost a year, so now she's stuck with me for life. Uh, <laughs> so I'm really excited to show you. I don't know if anyone has seen the uh, the Sizzler reel for the um, for the Bearsler yet, but it is a show. Uh, really honoring the gifts of Indigenous entrepreneurs. And I'm going to go through later on the different ways that makes us different than conventional capitalist entrepreneur shows that we all know and love and, and watch on TV. So let's, uh, let's give that a, a go. I see Michelle. 
Elizabeth, there we go. You're going to be talking to some bears. Tell us a little bit about your business. I am the founder and CEO of Nippy Industries. I am the owner and baker at Ali's Cake Creations. My business is regaliamaking.com. They're highly successful entrepreneurs and business people. We create bespoke beers for life special events. We're a first of kind year round grower of fresh produce. Bring your hearts forward. The indigenous language is very important to my company. So I do this work because I grew up witnessing the impacts of colonization on my community. As Indigenous peoples, bring your bravery forward. It's gotten you through till now. So I was raised with a lot of intergenerational trauma. Through each piece that we create, we're sharing a bit of Canada's story through an Indigenous lens, but I think this is a pretty great idea, and I think other people will think it's a pretty great idea. Really understand that they're here to lift you. They're here to lift you and witness your rise. It's really incredible to know that You've started a business that came from a difficult time for you. I love what your business is about, and I can't wait to see where you guys are going to go from here. And I applaud you for taking what you've learned and applying it in a commercial manner, but also respecting the land. Keep up the good work. I think you're going to make it. Standing here today, you already know you have a, a, a sale. You've already journeyed so far to get here. How are people finding you, and how are you offering your product to them? How are you going to distinguish it uh, from other products out there? I'm kind of thinking from a growth perspective, how can you grow your business where you're starting to make some money? Are you currently in a position where you're actually turning down opportunities? You guys are inspiring. It felt really emotional because we're pitching to our people. <laughs> Ultimately, it came down to social impact. And winner today is... Bears have decided. What are you going to do with $100,000? The journey doesn't end here. We want to be your mentors. We want to assist you in every way we can with your business. There only can be one winner, and the winner is... That is the 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 sizzler reel. I still get emotional watching it. It's um, it's you know how a when you're close to the fire and you're filming it, but you know when you see people see it for the first time and they get their their eyes teared up because it's you know it's it's emotional how we support um how we support everybody and and I think through this series you're gonna it's so different the different cultures the Kristen calls it uh co-op petition and uh she made me practice that because uh because I, I say cooperation cooperation um to to really support each other and 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 love each other and who we are and and uplift each other as we do in community so next slide please technology wasn't my friend even if I'm like need not even near it <laughs> sorry one second it keeps wanting to play the video again just give me a second here no problem as we it's just, wait it's just because it's so good <laughs> it was yeah. so good like I need a moment <laughs> that was like I got the chills how yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, Tabitha Bull and I, uh, Tabitha Bull and I are crybabies, and you know it wasn't easy to try to be on TV and keep your composure. So turning an idea into reality. So I uh, came up with this idea, uh, got a pitch document to APTN. Um, they said, and it was really the cart before the horse. It was okay. This sounds like a great idea, but we don't have any money. Um, this you're not, you can't um, apply for any kind of funding because you know it's uh, it's game show money. So we weren't applicable for a lot of grants, and I'll get back to or any grants whatsoever. So this was all based on sponsorships coming into um, you know 
tagging on and, and wanting to be a part of a great idea and selling a concept that didn't even exist yet to high level um, businesses like um, like BDC and Scotia Bank and you know Shopify and Mastercard and CCAB et cetera and. So they asked us to start a company. So I started Spark Sparkly Frog Clan. I'm from the uh, the Ho Hum uh, Clan in uh, in in Seashelt. It's a frog clan. I always get a hard time from my people saying that I never acknowledge uh, the fact that I'm from the frog clan enough. So there you go, Sparkly Frog Clan, because I'm a sparkle girl. Um, so we created our own company, started Sparkly Frog Clan, and then all of a sudden, um, Kristen made some crickets there. Um, because we didn't hear anything. It was like, oh, okay, you know, put in something in March, you know, April, May, June, July, summer goes by. I'm, my name is Action Jackson. So I am like, let's do this, set speed and didn't hear anything. And then in August, uh, we got approval from APTN and they said, we're totally interested in this. We've never done a reality show before. Uh, we've never had a show that we've agreed to that's going to promise that they can get the money. They can, you build it, they will come and have everything solidified. So uh, we were told that we could have this done and Kristen worked away day and night, you know, to get the sponsorship packages and get the value for our sponsors. So really defining a brand who we are as, as a business. So next slide, please. So dividing, uh, defining our brand and key messaging. So when working uh, with Indigenous entrepreneurs, my specialty is procurement, which I think in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be talking about pro uh, uh, authentic procurement uh, within business. And that is when I was an economic development officer, I was in charge of entrepreneurs, but I was also in charge of core values of partners and vetting partners. So part of that was creating um, an Indigenous business directory with our membership. So who can we buy from first? If someone's going to come within the community, I don't want to see anything outsourced. I want to fill the gaps with who we can provide services and skill sets first. So, you know, part of was buying Indigenous. We wanted um, an Indigenous producer director. We wanted Indigenous caterers. We wanted on-site coaches. Um, one of them, Aureen, is on, I think, a wonderful, amazing person. And, and Kristen, of course, wears many hats, but one of them was one of the head, was the head coach for all of these fine entrepreneurs. Uh, we had a dinner at Salmon and Bannock. We, we, you know, we support Inez Cook and, and in her, in her journey. So we invited all of the judges from all over Canada that came, the guest judges came and did a, a feast as we do as people and, and, and just bonded and, and supported everyone. I've got Giggy's beads on me right now. She, Valerie Davidson. So she um, creates this beautiful beadwork and she's Cree from uh, from uh, Winnipeg. She lives in Burnaby right now. She supplied all the jewelry. The wardrobe was from um, Elayla, uh, Sophia and Annalie Good, uh, who have been in Toronto and Vogue magazine and Paris and had their wares uh, showcased everywhere. And then the great Pamela Baker Himikalis from Squamish Nation. She also provided wardrobe. Um, gifts uh, from Shane Jackson, the set with Shane Jackson. So we really, really um, embodied everybody that came together as a, and promoted this and, and as a village really held each other up. We thought about colors, you know, copper uh, is wealth, um, red is indigenous and power. Um, what are our common values as indigenous people? Um, we respect, everything is respectful, it's protocol, it's collaboration it's working together and and really uplifting each other um, we wanted to embody our original you know uh, logo was there at the bottom we wanted to have first nations inuit and metis so we identified all of the different cultures and and indigenous communities um, and feeding the spirit of indigenous business across the nation we wanted uh, to recognize differences in cultures but we wanted to seek common ground we wanted to and celebrate diversity. Um, you know, we had people from, uh, you know, originally some someone from the Yukon. We have Ontario. We have Alberta um, promoting co co-opetition, and that is where we everyone works together. And we and Kristen really set that stage from the very beginning. Co-opetition. 
um, because what we do is we work together and we found because we spent so much time on set together that the, the entrepreneurs were getting to know each other. They got to know the coaches, the networking, posting goods or services on their Facebooks and social media of, of how they could help each other or work with each other in every way. And, and that was really special. And really insight, reconciliation, action, and, and really showcasing to our kind sponsors who became some of our guest judges of how we are as people and, and where their, their efforts were going in, in supporting a, a new program like this. So it was awesome. Next slide, please. So what works on TV? Uh, we liked the, we created, this is, this is a new industry, right? It's edutainment. It is educating the viewer, but entertaining the viewer. So what do, what do we know what's good? We want engaging storylines. I know that a lot of people watch, you know, American Idol or they watch other things. And what we love most about what I do guiltlessly and shamelessly is the, you know, the backstories. We can, you can watch a clip of somebody for a minute and you, your heart goes out, your emotion goes out to that person and you're really rooting for that person. And so we love the backstory. So engaging storylines, something that's socially relevant, um, authentic content where you see the culture and unpredictable because we don't know what's going to happen next. I mean, we know because we were there, but you know, uh, for the viewer, what's going to happen next? Who's going to go forward? Who's going to, you know, where, how we can follow the journey. So this is mass appeal audience across all demographics can watch and they can learn, you know, a lot of our audience isn't just going to be an indigenous audience, you know, um, we've got uh, a distributor that's interesting and in putting this out to Australia and New Zealand um, that are interested in watching our indigenous culture and, and, and see the journey that we're taking here and um, just root for the people that we're going to be rooting for and which is everybody. So um, uh, APTN has never done a reality show ever. They have never, and although this isn't live to tape, we still carry the journey of nine consecutive weeks and they've never had a show that's been fully funded by generous sponsors that have taken a chance on indigenous advancement, which is at a grassroots level of, of entrepreneurism. Next slide, please. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, elephant in the room or what we're not supposed to talk about, which is other shows that are that are um, entrepreneurial capitalist type shows. We know the ones I'm not going to mention them. Um, but, you know, judges uh, on those types of shows, you know, the, the judges and contestants are not diverse. It can be from from all over. There's uh, very few role models um, for Indigenous people and youth. Uh, judges on other shows are investors, so they want to take a great idea and they see the value in it, but what they want to take some ownership in it. And although that elevates the, the entrepreneur to, to new levels of where they would ever go, they do lose um, a bit of ownership in the say and how their company is being directed and focused. Um, their decisions are based on profit potential and conditions, not the social impact that you have in communities. Um, which is what I'll get into with this show. There's little or no support to help um, people shine that don't win and no guarantee of winners. Um, and a lot of the times the focus is on uh, different entrepreneur shows is to really focus on people that aren't prepared or they're belittled and made to feel small. And um, that is the opposite of, of what we do. And the judges have the final say, you know, there's no community involvement. And I'll get into how we were getting our, our community and peers involved with, uh, with decisions uh, towards the end of this. So next slide. So we, we plan to make shift happen. I love that, Kristen. Uh, what Indigenous twist could we uphold um, when we were doing the show? So all we wanted, we wanted this to be 100% uh, authentic and Indigenous. We wanted our Indigenous business leaders. Uh, we wanted our the judges to be Indigenous. We wanted uh, a diverse um, amount of different entrepreneurs from all over, from all over geographic locations, but also different types of businesses. Um, we award prize money. We, the, the individual, the entrepreneur, we don't take any control in anything. 
And, you know, Chief, the great Chief Clarence Louis said something that was really profound to me um, at one of his great inspirational speaks. And that's your, your network is your net worth. Those people that you meet, that you hang out with, you know, that you meet on, on can do and we get to, we get to talk and we got to get to collaborate about, um, about your great webinars and, and how we can really increase, increase our net worth by increasing our network. So we felt that was really important with the entrepreneurs getting to know each other and the judges. Oh my God, the judges, I'll get into the, into our judges, how dialed up connected these individuals are um, to move people to the next level. Um, and I'm not talking just the entrepreneurs. I'm talking about camp crew. I'm talking about, um, you know, the people that, that gave their, their time and wardrobe and what have you. So we don't, the entrepreneur keeps all ownership and control. Um, the only condition is that we get to get the backup stories. We get to hear your follow-up stories and we get to, um, we get to be a part of that. So, and then we provide group and individual coaching support before filming, um, before filming, Kristen spent, uh, 26 hours with people beforehand, just, you know, going through what, uh, what to expect. There's a lot of nervous individuals coming on, um, to this show and, and, you know, we had a uh, very limited time to get people here and people had to come here on their own expense. And I thought it was going to be the BC show, but boy, it, uh, it's not. And we've only had three people from BC and really happy to have everyone there. But Kristen really um, laid the uh, co-opetition and uh, I made everyone feel really, really comfortable. So next slide. Okay, so we had on-site coaching to help people shine. The lovely uh, DJ Osho, Tamalia, uh, she just got her name. Um, Ari Naskew was amazing. Tamira Goddard was amazing. Uh, chief head coach with Kristen, really setting the tone for everybody. Uh, when people arrived, they got uh, they got coaching. They got to meet each other. They got to practice their pitches. Um, really, really uh, amazing. And I'll get more into that. There's one hundred and eighty thousand dollars worth of prize money to be to be won. Uh, this is raised from corporate sponsors. So the corporate sponsors provide the prize money, but they also provide the, the cost for the production, which can be extremely expensive, like seven hundred thousand dollars, about. And it's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of money to 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 raise and for people to come up and 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 uh, and contribute to this is is so amazing. And I see a couple of people online too. We have uh, so we have six episodes. This is how the lay of the land is going to go. We have nine episodes. We have 18 entrepreneurs from all over Canada. On each, we have six shows, which are the preliminary shows. On each show, three contestants um, uh, compete for, um, for $10,000. So there's six winners that win $10,000. Out of those six winners, we go to episode seven and episode eight. Those are semifinals. Um, one person from each show is eliminated. So four people, uh, four um, contestants go to, to the ninth episode and somebody wins $100,000. So if you're doing the math and you're like, wait a second, that's only $160,000. Um, we want to keep this going afterwards. So take out the people that didn't win and we're going to um, have an online um, area where people can, can go in and listen to the pitches for the people that weren't successful in winning money. And we're going to do peer voting and other contestants can vote, you, you know, and their community can vote. And four of those lucky individuals will win $5,000. So everyone goes home, not with a car, but they go home with some sort of your prize and, and, and notoriety and not to speak of the notoriety and the networking. So next slide. Here are the judges. Oh, there's me again. It's like block um, me. So I was thinking when I was thinking about the judges, who would be great uh, to represent different communities for the judges in different areas. So originally what I wanted to do was uh, this was my idea. I just wanted to pitch the show and then maybe I would be a host. And then I thought, well, why wouldn't I be a judge? I'm like, I've supported 550 to this day, uh, different entrepreneurs from all different areas. And I, I know the grassroots level of this and, and the struggles and the risk and the emotion that goes through it. Dave Tuckerow. 
my hero, he came on, I pitched this idea and he, I said, if I was going to do a show, would you come on as a judge? And he said, yep. And I immediately, I put his name down as endorsed for APTN and APTN phoned me up and they're like, are you serious? Dave Tucker is going to come on your show. So he's won every award, you know, gazillionaire. He's, he's uh, changed the whole energy sector, um, probably 37 different companies at once. And, you know, he's such a wonderful individual. He's high level. How are you going to make some money? How are you going to, you know, he's like the, he's the person that's, you know, really positive, but he also uplifts everybody as well. Robert Louis, absolutely love uh, West Bank First Nation. Uh, he, uh, he was a chief for 24 years. He, he's a recovering lawyer. He also, um, he also has um, Indigenous World Distillery and Winery and Distillery out in West Bank. And it's, he's such a, an amazing person. And of course, the, like, Tabitha Bull, get real. She's amazing. She, uh, president and CEO of the Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business, a policy maker, engineer, beautiful, kind, empathetic, uh, and so wonderful. And all of these beautiful people um, uh, volunteer their time to come. There's no payment for it. They volunteered their time um, and efforts in 16 days of filming to come on to, to give back to, to the grassroots of, of, you know, sometimes where they started. So awesome to have everyone. And they agreed in December to come on. Next slide. Okay, so start the outreach, get the green light. So in December, we had to secure some sponsors. Um, the time crunch, uh, APTN said, if we don't have sponsors dedicated by, you know, the end of December, which is Christmas, by the way, which is COVID, by the way, um, that we couldn't have the show. And, uh, and we managed to scrape through and get that in January. We had to prep a website. When I say we, I mean her, I mean Kristen, prep a website, uh, launch an online call for contestants, boost sponsor drive, like everything you can imagine. Uh, February was pre-production, ask uh, DJ Osho to come on, Tamira to come on, Kristen to ride the helm of, of uh, getting coaching, uh, selected contestants, and in March we were filming. So next slide. So we had to find 18 Indigenous entrepreneurs. We didn't have a lot of time. We literally announced this January 18th on Facebook, to all of our friends, pushing it out there, social media. Um, they only had 10 days to get their applications in. So um, next slide. So Kristen made it simple to apply. So she put out a registration form. Um, they, she put some technology in. And when I say technology, it's probably just play, play on your phone. But for me, that's technology uh, for a three minute audition video. Uh, to so that people could audition for this. So next slide. What kind of applications did we get? Do you ask? Well, let me tell you, we got we got uh, health and beauty products. We got tourism. We got uh, cultural keep, keepers. We got tattoo artists, social enterprises, manufacturing of children's clothes. We had industry, some plumbing contractors, soap makers, techies, caterers, marketers solar power people, herbalists, we got everything. When we think conventionally of indigenous business, you know, we usually usually go to the artisan area of, you know, well, really good at art and things, but boy, we're going to blow your mind when we see this, when you see what, uh, what, what we have. We had, you know, uh, 80 successful applications. We have many applications that weren't complete, but we had 80 successful applications. Kristen and I did not uh, choose the individual's um, we had our producer and director because that would be a conflict for me. And I was, you know, I know everybody. I'm like, I've supported 550 entrepreneurs. What if I know somebody, but I didn't. So, uh, so great to, to, to have all the people that were chosen. Next slide, please. These are our guest judges. Super great. So I'm going to go through these really quickly. I'm sure everyone knows and loves the Great and beautiful Caroline Hilton from Indigenomics Institute, Robin Chakrabadi from Secure Guard, uh, Aman from Driving Force, Crystal Hunt came on from Shopify, um, Landon Miller came from Oquili, Tierra Fraser was brought on, uh, MasterCard wanted to come on, but 
they literally agreed on Thursday and we were filming on Saturday. So their VP um, was not available to come. So they asked if I knew anybody that would be a good role model. And hello, Tara Fraser, for sure. She's the first Indigenous female owner of, a, of a, she's a pilot and she also just bought her second plane. Um, Jeff Greenwell from Aboriginal Capacity Builders. We may know him from NABOC. He does all of the National Aboriginal Business Opportunities Conferences. Karen Fritz is amazing. Chief Supplier from, from uh, OPG. Um, Tanya Perry from Scotia Bank, Monica James from BDC, Lucy Peltier from NACA, Christine Bergeron from Van City, and the most amazing, lovely human being, John Galius from from um, Galius from DGW Law, which is located um, on Vancouver Island, does rights. They do rights and title and all sorts of Indigenous law, and it's so great because it makes sense when you're, you know, when you come on. I, where's, when you come on as, you know, as a conventional lending institution um, where you support entrepreneurs, but really what came out of the box was, you know, a law firm. What does that have to do with entrepreneurism? Well, like, you know, Erica, I think Erica is on here from DGW Law. She's the spearheaded one and, and uh, who came on and said, you know, the value is, is really supporting Indigenous communities from a grassroots level. And that's the way that we really uh, have our hands up. Yes, Kristen. And John's Haida. So he, yeah. oh yeah, yes, being Chris. a lawyer yeah. and being Indigenous, it was a, I, I was really excited that they were thrilled to come in. Thank you. Absolutely. So, you know, a law firm, a security guard firm, driving force that does rentals. Of course, you know, Shopify is great. And, and everyone, I'm just so generous with their time and efforts to come in and believe in this project. And they're all movie stars. I can't wait till you see them. We didn't have to do a second take. Everyone just spoke so natural. It was, it was amazing. So next slide. So we notified the contestants. We had four hours of virtual group meet the greet, 22 hours of individual coaching beforehand, uh, create, nurture, and spirit of coopetition. So like I said, Kristen really laid that land from the very beginning and everyone was very friendly. They couldn't believe how nice the judges were. You know, and when you come out into, you know, we've got five different camera, camera crews, we've got lights everywhere, you're going, off into a stage in a territory or place you've never been before for some people, um, just making everyone feel comfortable. So it was, it was great. Next slide, please. Okay, this is the superstars of the show, forget about us. So I wanna give you a, a little bit of a, a taste of the, the contestants that are in here and, and uh, June, June uh, Anthony Reeves, She's up the hill at Loken. She does botanicals, and fifth, she has five generations of people that um, for, of her family that use indigenous herbs for healing. We've got Sarah Beth Holden uh, from Toronto. She does red tape uh, brewery, so she has a, an amazing brewery with um, bespoke, bespoke beers. Uh, Dakota and Jesse Brandt. We're going to be heading out to Six Nations, and they're from Six Nations, and they have sapling and flint, which is um, silver. Um, silver jewelry, which they make and design out there. Mallory Youngway way, um, is CEO of Indigenous Box. And I'm sure everyone knows and has heard of her because she's everywhere and does a box that supports entrepreneurism and gets different items from entrepreneurs from all over Canada and puts them into a box that you get every three months. Amanda Balzi, uh, CEO of Four Directions. She does holistic counseling and healing. Um, for, for her community in different communities and just a lovely individual. Matricia Bauer, a uh, warrior woman. She uh, does indigenous walks and through COVID had to divert her business into creating bitters. And um, she's a real foodie too. And she's, she's uh, such a pleasure to listen to. And next, are I missing people? Can I see it? Oh, here I am, Amy Jackson. No relation, great last name though. She uh, she does she does indigenous love notes. So she I realized you know she she has a bunch of um, uh, key sayings that we say as indigenous people like ever sick. And uh, I didn't realize that I say hole all the time because I say it all the time. And and she's got some great she's got amazing humor and she's created notebooks and and uh, great stickers and things. Uh, Emily McKinney, she is Anishinaabe from, she's you know, from Swan Lake. She's been, um, she started her company when she was 16 
jingle dress, uh, jingle jingles. Yeah. Um, Deanne Hutfield, she does uh, pattern making and she teaches regalia um, and dancing, um, powwow dancing online. Ruby Daniels uh, is part of our youth section. So they have a group that works with school that gets donated cabinets and they put, they have a CNC machine and they do beautiful designs and they paint them and then they sell them to um to fund their program, their after school program. And in the show, she says, you know, this is amazing. I get to work with my best friend. And, and it's a great way to get kids, you know, working in community. Um, Sister Sage, absolutely love. They're out here in Vancouver. So I think most people know Sister Sage. They have um, smokeless sage. I have some. I have some, so you know we don't have to burn it. And they have uh, shampoos, and they have um, they have uh, creams. They're amazing. Uh, Alicia Alicia is is a cake baker, and she makes the most amazing cakes that you will ever see. Like we're talking Cake Boss times ten. So next slide, please. Ryan Ryan is is out of Vancouver. He uh, has fight fighter fit and he has a personal training um martial arts training um grew up with a lot of trauma like most of us did and in, in our in our lifetime but uh, with drug addiction and incarceration and turned his life around and and really is a role model in every respect that i could ever ever imagine for for youth for for my age for you know to come past adversity which is what we all go through but particularly um has turned his life around Matt LaPointe owns Alberta Canine, brought some dogs. Um, and uh, he, they do, uh, they have stuff that's, that smells like opiates and uh, alcohol in dry communities and then explosives. And they're just about to have puppies and I just wanna lie in the ground and have them all around me. Uh, Bobby Joe Matheson uh, has the first certified uh, tattoo college and piercing college in all of Canada. So excited about her, you meeting her, Jason Lizette uh, as a welder and he is uh, an entrepreneur and inventor that came up with a solar powdered water power water system and also a um, for work sites um, for emergency and emergency shower, chemical shower, et cetera, all in one. So amazing. Benjamin and Fabian um, own Agritech, such amazing individuals. Um, as we know, uh, food sovereignty is a problem in all communities and they're making a difference with their technology and growing foods and inventing biodegradable um, containers and doing everything that they possibly can to grow food faster, uh, to provide it to indigenous and uh, communities and Northern communities that are paying $10 for lettuce and, and, and allowing food that is nutritional value to go to Northern communities and can talk all day about them too. And Justin and Bobby have, uh, as most of us create businesses as entrepreneurs through having babies of our own and, you know, things of our own and and they created uh b um cell like for diapers and then also creams and um invented these great uh bibs for kids that uh tiara fraser said that she would like to have when she goes out you know just to wear around like a onesie so this is a little taste of who our um our entrepreneurs are next so these contestants remind us all of what their various reasons are of starting their businesses. I think you, what you're really gonna see with the Bears Lair is that everybody tells a story, a very, a story. And we we have some coaching at the be beginning and, and Tamara Goddard and, and DJ Osho, or Ian Askew, Tamalia, um, are, are really helping facilitate them speaking to each other. There's a lot of peer support. They, the entrepreneur or the contestant does their pitch and then the two other contestants in Kristen's great way of co opetition speak to each other and give them advice on how they could be better or to tell their story or to breathe or you know just be supportive. And, and that's what makes it really, really different. And I think you're gonna see a lot of um, emotion, a lot of nervousness, a lot of, uh, a lot of storytelling as we do as people. Uh, next. Behind the scenes, how much time do we have? We're okay. Yeah, you, yeah, you're okay. 
Okay, great. So I would like to show this uh, behind the scenes. This is a little bit of what some of our sponsors um, thought during their experience of being part of the Bears Lair. And um, it just gives you a, a different lens uh, besides this as a real, so. And Gina, while, while that's loading, Everyone's I, don't, welcome. I don't know if you Project can- Project managers. Um, but uh, I think Jason Lazat and Benjamin Fegan, I think they're here. So afterwards, when you get to the questions, you might see if they wanna, if we wanna put them on screen <laughs> again. <laughs> oh, I love both of them, oh my God. Okay. My name is Satasia. I'm a proud member of the Seashell Nation. I'm a proud member of the Frog Clan. My English name is Gina Jackson. And I am the creator, the executive producer, and one of the core judges for this amazing entrepreneurial journey called the Bears Lair. I know from my experience that one entrepreneur that's successful in a community can cause a ripple effect of being a mentor within that community, inspiring other people to be mentors in their community, inspiring people to take a chance, advice, risk, and be cheerleaders for each other. And I think that's the important thing. And that's the message, is a social impact and supporting others through employment and training and support and mentorship that makes a difference. And that's what the Bears Lair is about. The impact of the show itself is just putting us on, the, on a platform uh, where we could show uh, the different types of businesses in our communities. And uh, the show is also going to expose uh, these young businesses to other, other markets uh, that they may not have even considered. Uh, you know, people are going to watch the show on television and say, oh, I, I like that, or I want to buy that, or I want to be a part of that. Ani, Tabitha Indigenous, Nipissing Indigenous Ba, Midjasi Dodem. My name is Tabitha Bull. I'm a member of Nipissing First Nation, and I am the President and CEO of Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business. So I have the honor of being a core judge. So I've been able to meet with all of the entrepreneurs and participate in all of the episodes. We're really here to really support the entrepreneurs through their pitch. Uh, you know that it's a, it's a nervous space to be for a lot of entrepreneurs. So we're really trying to be supportive to make sure that we understand what their business is. Um, and even if they don't win an episode or move on, uh, really to be there to support all of the 18 entrepreneurs through our connections to make those connections for them and to provide advice as to where their business might be able to grow or maybe they need to focus a little bit more. Uh, so, you know, it's really a, a journey. My name is uh, Simu. Uh, it means connected to the land. I'm Okanagan Silks, uh, Robert Louie. Uh, the Okanagan. So uh, I am very, uh, very much pleased to be on Bears Lair. Um, I love to support uh, Indigenous interpreters, and this is a tremendous opportunity. So I enjoy it uh, immensely. I want them all to win. Uh, we have picked some winners. Now we're looking at $100,000 winners. So uh, I think all of us are uh, rooting for every single one of them. So uh, it's going to be a tough one. And I think the public needs to understand, Canada needs to understand the, uh, the uh, diversity of the entrepreneurs that exist in this country. And I think this is a tremendous opportunity to showcase that. I've made it my life's mandate to include and to improve the quality of life uh, for First Nations people. Um, it's not one path I've been on and I've been fortunate enough to bring on some really good people with me along the way and programs and initiatives like this, like the Bears Lair, it's action and it, and it provides immediate results. This is something we need to be involved in. This is something I'm super passionate about um, just from li live that life. Uh, coming up uh, through my through my community, and uh, you know I'm really really excited to see what's uh, what the they have, what they have to offer. The minute I heard the idea from Gina, uh, I committed because it's such a great idea, such a natural fit to support entrepreneurship in the indigenous communities. 
I'm a big believer that uh, success long-term comes from ownership. And so if we can create opportunities for, for freedom, for, for dependence, once you become a business owner, if we can help to invest in those skills, and then we can help to create a legacy of wealth that will then become a self-fulfilling upward cycle. Because if we can create momentum around entrepreneurship in the Indigenous communities, that will start to live itself and that cycle will go upwards. So if I was speaking to each one of the Indigenous entrepreneurs, I guess I would I would say, you know, trust your gut. Go with what you think is right. Keep doing what you, what you want to do and don't let anybody tell you it's not going to work. Or, you know, there's no market for it. Um, and keep following your passion. I could be the, the first witness to something that is potentially going to change our community and maybe our country. Uh, some of these uh, young entrepreneurs uh, with their ideas, uh, they could shape our future. Uh, it just they need the support, they need uh, the, the guidance. And I'm more than honored to be part of this. Uh, it's exciting. It's a great honor to be on the show. You know, it's. Um... I give Gina a lot of credit for the effort and time and energy her and her team have put in to actually make this happen. I know how difficult it is to make things like this happen. The amount of work behind the scenes is unbelievable to, to pull off a show like this. So kudos to Gina and, and the whole team for doing that, right? My name is Tira Fraser, and I'm a proud Métis woman. I am a founder of Esquail Air and Squail is a Cree word for woman. Co-creating the conditions for Indigenous businesses to thrive is the single most natural, swift, and effective pathway to economic reconciliation in our country. And it's time for everyone to take action. Uh, my name is Caroline Hilton. I am a channel from the Heshkwit Nation. My new channel's name is Wakatush. I'm the CEO and founder of the Indigenomics Institute, and we facilitate the development of a $100 billion Indigenous economy. The Bears Lair is bringing purpose into focus in a very tangible way of connecting our Indigenous entrepreneurs to our most powerful why. And that in itself becomes so important to reflect that why in ourselves, in our family, and in our communities. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That right. is amazing. Thank you. Um, I guess we'll just go go fast to the to the end to the probably to the next slide really fast because I know Kristen has a QR code that we need to identify at the end. So we have three connective initiatives. We have the Bears Our TV show. We have the Bears Lair website resource stand where we have webinars, where we have informational for all of entrepreneurs. If you're ever thinking of becoming an entrepreneur, know somebody it is, this will be the place where you should go. Um, all of our sponsors have their initiatives and we'll have grant opportunities, et cetera. And then next is youth entrepreneur camps. I don't know if I, I know that we only have a little bit of time for, for Cuyone, but um, what Kristen, um, and I taught many different entrepreneur accounts uh, with our, with Squamish Nation for adults and then knowing that a lot of people brought their kids to come and watch and their kids became more engaged and had their hand up, we realized, you know, that maybe an entrepreneur camp for youth would be exactly what we needed. And so Chris, this is, this is Kristen's dream child and, and you know, Osho has been in our, in our entrepreneur courses before, but really putting this out. So we have a TV show. We have an entrepreneur resource on the bearsler.com. And then we have uh, right now three youth entrepreneur camps for kids ages 12 to 18, all over Canada. To any sponsors that want to sponsor a camp anywhere in Canada, we take care of everything. The outreach, the 
uh, promotion of it, the media release, the waivers, uh, facilitating the camp with myself and Kristen and people within the community. Um, and then we offer our sponsors to come and take part of it. And you get a video um, depicting the whole thing from day one where the kids are rolling their eyes, can't, can't believe their parents are punishing them that by going here. Uh, today for where, you know, at the graduation ceremony where they're hugging each other and have these lifelong friends and education and saying it's one of the best things they've been a part of. So that to, that uh, will conclude. Normally, if I didn't talk so much, I tried to do it really fast, this four minute dream camp, but I guess we only have about five minutes for questions. So I'll, I'll give that. And if anybody wants to know more about the dream camp, please let me know. Kristen's going to kill me if I don't say this. So if anybody wants to put their phone up to here, uh, QR code, as if, you know, we're ordering something at a restaurant, I, <laughs> but she has all the information. She spent a lot of time on this technology. And so if anybody wants to learn more about uh, what we're talking about, the dream camp and what have you, please put your phone up and have that there. And I guess, um, Elizabeth, Michelle or Elizabeth, if you want to open the floor for a quick question. Yeah. Like talk about it, like inspiration, I feel like doesn't even capture what this is. And I couldn't help but to think about what I said at the very beginning that our ancestors are here, our ancestors are cheering us on and I, I cannot help but believe that how proud, you know, the people who've walked before us, what you're doing here, the gift that you're bringing to community, to our nation. So thank you so much. Um, we do have, I could talk on and on yeah. with my gratitude, but we only have some time, a small amount of time for some questions. So does anyone want to jump on in or you can put a question in the chat box? We would love to hear from, from you. Um, so again, there was a, some thank yous in the chat box, great presentation and story. Um, anyone want to jump in with any questions? Can, can I ask if maybe Matt, since he was on the show, if you don't mind just giving your insights and then maybe Ben, and, and then if someone else has a question, by all means. Perfect. I totally knew you were going to put me on the spot. <laughs> um, hey, everybody, it's Matt LaPointe here. I'm one of the contestants on season one of the Bears Lair. Um, I'm Métis from Alberta. And my wife and I own Alberta Canine. Like Gina said, we, we breed, raise, and train working dogs for a variety of public safety and detection roles. Um, yeah, the show was absolutely awesome. Uh, you know, we had a lot of fun making our audition uh, video and everything kind of, it happened very, very quickly. And next thing we knew we were in Vancouver for filming and um, it was awesome. Meeting the other contestants was, was, uh, absolutely amazing. There was a good variety of businesses and just all around awesome people. Um, the production crew was, was incredible. Um, it was a very, for being, for being the first, uh, season of the show, the production of it was a very well-oiled machine. Everybody, um, everybody on the production crew pulled their weights. The judges were amazing and yeah, no, we had a, we had an excellent time, uh, there. Um, like I said, the networking has been incredible. And even since the show, um, that's continued on and, and, uh, all of us that were involved are kind of all, you know, reaching out to each other for advice and stuff. Now we've kind of built all those bridges with, with the judges, and with the other contestants. And, uh, yeah, no, I think, uh, all around, it was an awesome, awesome production and kudos to Gina and Kristen and everybody that was involved in, in making it happen. And we're super excited for September 6th to see you there. Oh, just so you know, it's September 11th. They just chose, they just changed it now. It's September 11th because September 6th was the first day of school. So we didn't think they did, APTN didn't think we'd get that audience. So it's September 6th for nine weeks on Sunday night at seven o'clock. September 11th, Gina. September 11th, that's what I meant, sorry. That's what I meant. <laughs> and Ben, I see you're, are you still there, Ben? And then maybe depending on time, um, DJO shows on too. Yep, I'm here. Um, so I'm uh, at our facility, Agritech North in Dryden, um, and we're in full operations now. Back when we participated in the event, we probably couldn't do it at the time. Um, uh, now, because we're in full operations, we can't leave at this point. But uh, the show was like, uh, it was perfectly timed for where we were in, in our renovations and construction. So that was fortunate for us. Um, yeah, the, the, the experience in the Bears Lair um, really helped shape uh, the vision and future for 
for what Agritech North will become. We've, we've established so many additional collaborations and the feedback and support that all of the uh, bears provided and, and even our colleagues uh, who are co-operators, uh, co-competitors um, were, were all, we're, we're almost working together um, throughout the uh, series and we've, we've established new business relationships, you know, across business areas outside of our, our own, like uh, not just food, um, you know, sometimes it could be beauty products uh, or or crafts or, or other things that use greens uh, or things that we can grow that aren't necessarily food. And so there's a whole different cultural aspect to our business that we're exploring now. And um, and it's a, it's a joy to kind of explore uh, what else we can become um, beyond beyond just our, our core mission of uh, uh, tackling food sovereignty issues throughout Canada. Um, yeah, it was it was a joy to be able to spend time with everyone in person um, and uh, have an opportunity and a platform uh, for our small business in a in rural community. Um, it's it's a unique uh, opportunity that we wouldn't have expected, and it was nothing like what we expected. That you know, watching things like Shark Tank or our Dragons Den gives you a really wrong idea about what about what what this experience was like and so um uh, we were pleasantly surprised and and are better off for it thank you thank you both awesome thank you so much um dj osho you're here you have maybe 30 seconds uh we'd love to hear from you if you want to join yeah thanks sorry i had my camera off i was having a really bad hair day and it's really noisy around my house like they're doing <laughs> like mowing lawns and stuff, but I just want to say congratulations uh, to Gina and Kristen. Uh, you've been amazing in my uh, entrepreneurial journey. And I'm just going to throw a question back at Gina because she throws this question at me. She just did a couple of days ago um, at a documentary um, <laughs> a Q&A. But what, what keeps you going? Like how, like, I know Gina personally, and I don't know how she does it because she's so busy, like what keeps you going? And like, how do you keep balanced being so busy? That's my question for you. Balance is having the anchor of, of strong, um, grounded people, supposedly strong grounded people, I think <laughs> all around me um, and watching people like Ben and like watching Matt and you Osho just rise up and become something that's beyond what any you know what you expected of yourself and i know that you i mean you're my you're my ultimate right and and all of these other entrepreneurs are going to be my ultimate too because you just keep hitting every level and knocking that ceiling down and that gives me energy and that gives me power and i think just making a difference in in other people's lives and i know that you know this and matt and ben is what this show is about, it's about social impact. It's about making a difference in communities. It's about making a difference in people. It's about changing the paradigm. And it's just about making this world as Indigenous people and for non-Indigenous communities in the world a better place for who we are, how we change things, and how to make a difference. And I think that's what this is about. Wow, mic drop right there. So thank Damn. you all so much for being here. Like talk about inspir again, I got to find out the Cree word for inspirations because I think that that's what will capture what I'm trying to say here. Uh, so thank you for what you did. You bl blazed a trail here in our nation and it can only grow from here. I can't wait till September 11th. I can't wait for, I was trying to guess I was trying to see if there was any hints of who won, but like everyone seems remarkable. So I can't <laughs> wait to watch. Um, thank you so much for taking us behind the scenes, taking us on this journey together. Um, thank you both for what you brought to this table that you're showing the gift of Indigenous people and the vision and the dreams and what our ancestors have prayed for. So thank you so much. And thank you all for joining us this afternoon. I got goosebumps. I was smiling the whole time. I was giving that head nod. So you brought good medicine today, good energy. So thank you so much. Um, I hope you have the good rest of the day, everyone. I hope you leave inspired and follow that path that the creator has put you on, that dream that creator has given to you. So thank you all. And we'll see you again for sure September 11th. <laughs> Peace. Thanks, Thanks everybody.
Thanks, Thanks Sasha. Thank Thanks, Kristen, Matt, Ben. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank you.